What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today we're gonna to be going over the top 13 features in the brand new iOS 11. So most of these are gonna be the big features, the features that Apple talked about at the WWDC event and a lot of the features that people are gonna notice when they install iOS 11 on their device. But don't worry, I do have a video coming up very soon within the next day or two talking about close to 40 hidden features in iOS 11. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, we're gonna be going over the top 13 biggest new features in iOS 11. Now, if you don't know how to get iOS 11 on your device, make sure to check the link in the description down below. I made a video on how to get that before the public beta later on this month. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first feature is the whole look and feel of iOS 11. So once you install this, you know that it's a new version. You know it's not another version of iOS 10. You can just tell by looking at the battery. You can tell by looking at the App Store icon, the iTunes Store icon. And just, you know, when you have a SIM card and you can see the bars up there for your signal are actually bars now instead of the circles. Just a lot of small UI changes that definitely look great. Like I said, you can see the new icons right there. And if we go over, you can see the calculator has changed as well, the icon. And if we go ahead and go into the calculator, you can see it's a whole new look here. It's a lot more circular than it has been ever before. And then that UI change continues throughout the applications. You can see the uh, keypad here and the phone application looks a little bit different. If we go over to the favorites, you can see we have the uh, bold text up there on the top left for the recents, the favorites, everything. It really mimics the iOS 10 music application look. So that goes on throughout the whole iOS. We go to messages you can see it's the same inside of messages right there. And again, it's just a lot of UI changes that definitely makes it feel you know, a lot different than iOS 10. Next is the control center. So I couldn't go very far in this video without mentioning the control center. You can see right there, that is the new control center for iOS 11. Get used to it. I know it's pretty hard to get used to right now, but we're gonna have to get used to that because we're gonna be dealing with this type of control center for at least the next year. So looks pretty you know, clunky at first. I didn't really know what I thought about it at first. I didn't really like it, but it has definitely grown on me. So you can see we have all our icons right here all along this left side. We have the music widget right there. We have our uh, brightness. So we can turn that up and down like that. We have our volume right there. We have all our little toggles down here. But the best part about Control Center is that it's completely customizable. So if we go over and we go into settings, if we go ahead and scroll down to Control Center, you can see we have all of this right here. So you can add and organize additional controls to the control center. So this is literally just like a jailbreak tweak. So this is awesome. So you can see you can move around the icons in here. So if you move the flashlight down below the camera, you can see it has moved now way over here. Go ahead and move that back up. You can add all these things in here. You can add the alarm. You can add accessibility shortcuts, Apple TV remote, and you can see they all add up down there at the bottom of the control center. So really, really cool. I've actually grown to really love this new control center. Even though I didn't like it at first, I just love the customizability of the new control center in iOS 11. Next is the screen recording. So yes, you read that right, right there in the control center. You can now do screen recording natively in iOS without the need of a third party application. So this is what the icon looks like on the control center right there. If you go ahead and click on that, you can see it actually starts recording right away. So if you go back to the home screen, you can see up at the top, it's actually recording and we have the blue bar right there. Now what's really cool about this is if we 3D touch on this, even while we're recording, you actually have the option down here to use your microphone audio. So if you wanted to talk like during gameplay, you can simply tap it and then microphone audio on, tap it again and it's off. And then of course you could stop recording here as well, or you could just go back and tap the top right there and you could stop it straight from there. Boom, and then it shows a new UI uh, pop up here showing that it has saved to your photos, to your camera roll. So that is screen recording built in natively to iOS. Amazing feature. I definitely didn't expect this with iOS 11, so it's a great, great surprise. Amazing feature in iOS 11. Next up is do not disturb while driving. And this actually locks out pretty much everything on your device except for like the maps so you can look at maps and everything while you're driving. So basically it knows you're driving if you're connected to the Bluetooth of a head unit in your car or if you're plugged in via USB to your car. So basically you're not allowed to do anything except for like look at the maps application on your device. If, you know, if you get a text message or something like that, you can set it up to auto respond saying, you can't talk right now, you know, you're in a car driving and you're busy. So this is a really great feature from Apple and this could definitely, you know, quite literally save lives. You know, if so many people text and drive, this could be a great way, you know, to raise awareness for that as well. I'm sure a lot of big, you know, publications are gonna pick up stories about this feature right here. Next up is the App Store redesign. So not only has the icon changed for the App Store, but the whole App Store has completely changed. So if we go ahead and start over here at the Today tab, you can see we have all of the brand new apps. Welcome to the all new App Store. This is just today, it shows the date up there and it shows all of the new applications here. So if we go down, you can see it just looks so much more modern, so much more nice, a lot of imagery, a lot of photos, a lot of videos, a lot of GIFs, 
just so much more interactive uh, on all these tabs. But this is just the first tab here for the today view. You can go down so it's like new apps for certain days. So this is for Sunday, and then we had it for uh, the fifth and now the sixth all these new applications and things that came out during that day. Then we have the games tab down here so you can go through all the games. You can see the top trending. You can see let's play as they start playing automatically. Then we have the app section right here which is what we're all used to where we could see the top paid and the top free charts right there. If we go and click on that, we can see this, this is pretty uh, familiar, paid apps, free apps at the top. You can see this does look a little bit different though as well. We have the update section, which is a little bit different and then search, which is different as well. But what I really like, is if you go onto an application, you can see we have a whole new look here now. So I really like how it shows the stars real big there. I really love how it shows the number it is currently in the app store and the age rating there as well. Go ahead and scroll down, you can see it just looks so much more modern, so much more advanced than it used to. So you can see the reviews real big there. You see all the reviews and uh, it just looks so much nicer in my opinion. So definitely a great uh, step forward for the App Store. Next up is another new feature that I unfortunately can't show you right now, but that is the augmented reality features built in to iOS 11. And at WWDC, Apple actually unveiled ARKit, which is a new developer platform for creating iOS apps that tap into augmented reality. And these apps that are built with ARKit are gonna be able to use computer vision to identify surfaces and add 3D objects. And those 3D objects are gonna be able to create dynamic shadows that are rendered in real time. So I definitely cannot wait for this to be a reality. Next up is improvements to Siri. So we have a whole new Siri voice and a new Siri UI. So you can see down here, this little thing is definitely new right there. Siri also has a little bit more AI behind it now and knows more context. So if you say like, who is the first president? And then you say, how tall was he or when was he born? It's gonna know who you're talking about and not just search Google for, you know, when was he born or something like that. It's gonna know who you're talking about like it's a real conversation. You can also translate through Siri, which is really cool. So if we say this, Please, Siri, translate please in Chinese. So there you go, it just translated live right there within Siri, which is really awesome. The next feature is peer-to-peer -peer payments through iMessage. So that's right, we now have peer-to-peer -peer payment possibility through an app in iMessage. This app is called Apple Pay Cash and it's gonna allow you to send money to people that have iMessage in iOS 11, just like you would with Venmo, except for now you don't have to have a third-party application to run it through. It's just gonna run straight through the iMessage application. Speaking of messages, you can also save messages to the cloud now, which is awesome because before you'd usually have to transfer your text from phone to phone, but now they can actually sync into the cloud so you don't have to worry about transferring from device to device. The Maps application also got a nice improvement in iOS 11 and it now actually uses indoor mapping for the first time in iOS. So that means you could basically go to like a mall or an airport or anything like that and you can use indoor mapping. So you're gonna be able to see like if you go into a mall, you can see where the stores are and everything like that, where the restrooms are, all of that while walking through the mall indoors. And it's the same for airports. So it's not all airports right now, it's still rolling out to certain cities and certain states, but for the ones that it supports right now, you can go into an airport and you're gonna be able to see where security is, you're gonna know where baggage claim is, where your, uh, you know, where your terminal is, is all of that stuff while you're actually walking through the airport, which is really incredible. We're also gonna be getting lane guidance with this new maps refresh. So basically it's gonna tell you which lane you should be in for an upcoming turn while you're driving somewhere. Then it also looks for new routes to reduce your time at every single intersection, which could definitely save you some time if there's a wreck right ahead. The 10th feature is exclusive to the iPad, and this is basically just gonna allow you to have a very Mac OS-like experience. So you get a lot of icons in your dock here. You can see all these icons in the dock on the new iPad, or not the new iPad, any iPad with iOS 11. And then you could also do drag and drop on the iPad, which is really, really cool. So iOS 11 is a big, big update for the iPad. Next is the ability to move multiple app icons at the same time. So if you go into wiggle mode and you start moving one icon, if you go and click on the other icons, you can select as many as you want and you can see they start piling up and you can move them to a different page just like that. Something that iOS has needed for many, many years. And this is actually gonna be included in my hidden features video, but it was just too good not to show you in this video. Next up is a newly refined lock screen. So there's actually no notification center as you can see there from the lock screen. And then if you go ahead and swipe up, you can see notifications from earlier today. So it's only gonna show you notifications that you have not acknowledged right here. But if you swipe up, you can see notifications from earlier that maybe you have acknowledged but you haven't clicked on. And then the final feature in iOS 11 that I wanted to talk about today is the files application right there that everybody gets by default with iOS 11. So this will just basically allow you to see all of your documents that you have synced across like Mac OS, iOS, any other device like iCloud,
cloud drive and things like that as well. So it's pretty cool. You know, a lot of people thought it was like a full file system where you'd be able to see the files, you know, on the inside of iOS, but I can't see iOS. I can't see Apple ever doing that. So I'm not sure why people thought that, but you can see right here, you can see the iCloud drive on my iPhone recent, recently deleted. Then you can see the tags here. If you do tags on Mac OS, I personally don't, but you could do that right there and they would show up right here, which is pretty cool. This is going to be a lot more useful if you are on an iPad and you do a lot of business related things, but you know, for the casual uh, user of an iPhone and iOS 11, I can't really see them using this application very much at all, but it's definitely a cool application and feature to have in iOS 11. So there you have it guys. Those are my top 13 features in iOS 11. Again, these are just some of the more common features, some of the most known features, but I'm going to be having a video very soon going over nearly 40 hidden features in iOS 11. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed if you have not done so already. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys very soon.